Uh, welcome to this Master Spec uh, update and podcast. I'm Mark Fairburn, the National Sales and Marketing Manager for Master Spec. And today we're going to be looking at some of the upcoming changes to the H1 code and how these will affect the Master Spec sections for you as specifiers. Uh, and giving us a quick summary of the changes we've made to help you meet the new code, we have with us today Sarah Sandland. Sarah's going to give us some guidance. She's a senior editor here at Master Spec. Uh, she's been leading a team of editors who have been making all the changes to the Master Spec content for you. So Sarah, with all of the changes in H1, AS1 and VM1, some of which are going to come into effect pretty shortly, in fact, November 2nd, I understand that you've been coming through all of our content and updating our sections to get us ready. Can you just give us a little bit of context about those major changes? I understand that this will affect uh, both the residential and commercial buildings slightly differently, but there's also an increase in the number of climate zones to six from three, and that's going to increase the amount of uh, insulation required and also affect different building elements differently, including roofs and walls. So um, can you just give us a high level summary, starting firstly with those climate zones? Yes, um, previously the climatic zones were not three, there were three zones. Yep. Um, these were based on New Zealand standards. So NZS 4218 for housing and small building and NZS 4243 for, for the large buildings. So these documents are no longer cited and instead the climatic zones are now included in the H1 documents. These appear in Appendix 6. And you're correct, there are now six zones. And unfortunately, they don't align um, in any way to the old zones. For example, the South Island was previously in Zone 3. The South Island now has four zones across it, um, varying from Zone 3 up to Zone 6. Okay, and so uh, that's obviously going to affect us, but uh, the commercial and residential buildings, the difference between those, how's that going to affect us? Well, as I previously mentioned, um, the existing documents refer to the New Zealand standards. So to find the minimum R values required, you referred to NZS 4218 for housing and 4243 for large buildings. So now we have H1, AS1 and VM1. These apply to the energy efficiency of housing and buildings up to 300 square metres. It's important to note that housing um, includes detached dwellings as well as multi-unit residential, so apartments. H1, AS2 and VM2, which are new, apply to the energy efficiency of buildings greater than 300 square metres, excluding housing. So all housing, no matter what the size, is AS1, VM1. So those, then, those new documents include tables that give you the minimum um, construction hour values required for the various climatic zones. And yes, those hour values have all gone up across the board. <laughs> It's also worth mentioning that the existing H1 documents referred to NZS 4218, which is the methods for determining total thermal resistance of building parts. Now, this document is still cited. It's used to de determine the thermal resistance of walls, roofs, opaque doors and slabs, other than slab on ground. But for windows and doors, construction hour values are now found in Appendix E. And these are based on ISO documents, so ISO 100771 and 2. And for glazing, the BS 673 for glazing. For housing only, these documents also include a table of generic construction R values. And slab on ground, um, these are now contained in Appendix F, so the thermal resistance of slab on ground for floors. So there was one other change, it was uh, VM3, uh, which is new, and it applies to commercial buildings. How, could you tell me, give me, expand on that a little for me? Yes, so VM3 is uh, the energy efficiency for HVAC systems in commercial buildings. So this was not covered in the previous fourth edition of the H1 documents at all. Um, it covers air conditioning and mechanical controls, the energy efficiency of equipment that make up those systems, so all the components. Um, it includes the ductwork and pipework design and thermal insulation, as well as energy monitoring systems for air conditioning and mechanical in large buildings. 
It's worth noting that if a building contains more than one use classification, for example, if you have a building that includes commercial and industrial, VM3 will only apply to the area that contains commercial use. So I know you've been leading the team for the last couple of months, making updates to the work sections to help our designers and specifiers out. Approximately how many changes do you think we've made to the master spec sections? The changes affect approximately 200 to 250 sections across the board. Um, 200 of those addition, um, amendments will be going live on the 1st of October. Yep. Um, but the amendments relating to VM3 will go live on the 1st of November the following month. Great, and that's good to know. So what type of sections, apart from those that are just insulation, are affected uh, mostly? There's obviously a whole huge range of mass spec. Insulation's going to obviously be affected, but what else has been affected? Yes, amendments have been made to sections across all the CBI numbers, not just the thermal insulation sections. Um, so it affects effectively all sections that incorporate a thermal insulation component. So this might be concrete with under slab insulation, wall claddings where it includes insulation, warm inverted roof sections, windows, doors, skylights, curtain walls, as well as the obvious insulation sections. Okay, so as a specifier and you're looking at master spec with these updates, uh, what should you, should you be looking for in the work sections that are different? Well, all the references have been updated. So this is references to the building code as well as New Zealand standards. So 4218, 4243 will no longer appear. Um, also, the current version of 4859, which is the thermal insulation materials for buildings um, standard, has been updated to the most recent version. Um, we have added guidance notes throughout these sections. In a quick bullet point at the beginning of the section, you'll find a guidance note just as a general um, description of what's happened and also some guidance around timelines. Um, the windows, skylights, curtain wall and glazing sections all now include a thermal performance clause which appears in the one general. Um, some of these sections already had that performance clause but it has been updated. Okay. Uh, what do I have to do as a specifier with my specification to meet the new requirements? You should be following the guidance notes that have been provided in the sections, as, as well as referring to the new H1 documents, so the AS1 and VM, VM1, AS2, VM2 documents. Um, and the other thing is to check the products that they meet the new requirements with the minimum R values, which have been increased across the board. Moving forward, we'll be seeing changes trickle through from manufacturers and suppliers over the next period as they update their product ranges. But at this stage, it's wise to check all those requirements with the suppliers first. Is there any issue if I just apply all the changes now? I know some developers and some of our some of the clients of architects and designers are requesting that they update the new code right away. Is there any problem with that? Uh, the first edition for the H1 documents became effective essentially a year ago in November last year and you've been able to use that to date. But come the November this year, the fourth edition, so the previous H1 edition, will no longer be in effect. So from November this year, you, you will have to use the fifth edition of H1 documents. Saying that, the new documents do allow for a staged approach. So for zones one and two, so effectively the northern part of the North Island, um, windows and doors, the minimum construction R value has been reduced down to R 0.37 until November 2023. So essentially a year's grace. Um, in August this year, they... Um, released an Amendment 1 of the 5th edition for the H1 documents. Um, this incorporated an additional transition for housing only. So it is for housing only, not for any of other building uses. And that's effective in through until the 1st of May 2023, so essentially a six-month grace. 
this effectively um, reduces the R values, minimum R values required for walls, roofs, floors to be the equivalent of NZS 4218. And for windows and doors, the R value 0.37 for all climatic zones throughout New Zealand. But that's only for housing and not for any other building use. Great, thanks. Um, so for me, key things to remember if you're uh, running a master spec specification system is you need to update and review any office masters that you've previously done under the old code uh, and bring them up to spec. Probably I would advise you to start to your master spec product partners about specific projects and the requirements you might have under the new code and work section support might be an ideal way to do that or at least talk to them and if you've got current ongoing specs so specifications that are already underway probably best to update them to the new code as well uh, and get those uh, older sections that you may have started some time ago back into shape by using the update manager to put the content in Think about what type of project you're dealing with and what region it's in, because it's really important to obviously get this content right so that you can get the specification correct. Sarah, I'd like to thank you for your time. It's just uh, been a good sort of upper level summary of what we've done. Is there anything else that you could suggest that people look at to make sure that they meet these changes? There is a good summary of the changes in each of the H1 documents, so page three of each of the acceptable solutions verification methods, there is a summary of the main changes in H1 versions, in each version. Okay. Uh, thanks for that. We'll post this resource up there as well with this podcast link. And uh, thank you very much for your time. It's been a pleasure.